Praise the Lord and welcome to Wednesday in the Word at the Carpenter's House here on 3500 Gulf Freeway. We just thank God for being here. We are so excited to be here on tonight and we got great expectation. I don't know if you all have heard. I know sometimes we don't, you know, get to say everything that's coming over the airways, but you know, our Pastor Pope is going to become Apostle Pope this weekend. Yeah. So you want to come out at 10 a.m. Yes. Amen. And see our service. We got guest apostles and ministers coming in. And we're just going to hear the word of the Lord. And we're going to have a commissioning service. And yours truly will be a part of that as well. Amen. So we just thank God for them. This is a good place to be. And, you know... We wouldn't want to be ever. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. With so much that's going on in the world, you know, uh, it's good to really be here so we can have time to hear what thus says the Lord. So we're going to start off with Psalms 27, 13, and 14. Father, we thank you again from just hearing from the third heaven on this morning. God, we thank you, Lord, yes. that you rest rule and abide with us. We thank you for years to hear what the Spirit is saying. We give you all honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So it's good to be here in warm. I got relatives and friends in Colorado, and they had a snow day today. So right. <laughs> sometimes we don't want to deal with mosquitoes, but everywhere you go, there's going to be something. So we just have to thank the Lord. You know, he's in charge of everything. All things work together for the good. To them that love the Lord, to them who are called according to his purpose. Amen. So we started in Psalms 27, 13 and 14. And the King James Version says, I have fainted unless I have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. 14 verse says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And it's good to understand that sometimes we have to wait. We get impatient. We get in a hurry. That's why we got road rage and everything else because people are just always in a hurry wanting to get somewhere and then they have to speed up to a light and then wait. And then you, can, you come up there and pull a sign and they just smile. Now what did you get? You did all this hurry and rush. Now you still got to wait. So we have to watch this. Sometimes we have to know that God is in charge and that's our our subject today is going to be God's in charge, and then we're all going, so going to look at it as a subtopic of are you willing? I mean, you know, God's in charge, but we still have to submit ourselves to the promises of God. So he's in charge. Another version of that 13 and 14 verse says, I would have despaired unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait on the Lord. Now, one of our best scriptures when we look at waiting, come on here, what is it? Isaiah 40 and 31. Uh -huh. If you don't remember, we got a song could quote it, but I'm going to go in here. But they that wait upon the Lord yeah. shall renew their strength. That's right. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. Yes. Yeah. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. Wait on the Lord. How many know it's good to wait on the Lord? If somebody yes. says, I'm, I'm going to wait till my changes come. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. And change is coming whether you like it or not. Yes. So you might as well, you know, because sometimes God has to get some things prepared for us that, um, you know, we might be trying to rush to. It might be that great home. It might be whatever the place is. And you rush and you might get that Ishmael and not get the Isaac my, because my. of being impatient. So you want to wait courageously on the Lord. In Psalm 62 and 1, it says, Truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. So uh, thank God. They talk about an uncommon salvation. There's all kinds of salvations, but that I, my soul waiteth upon God. From him comes by my security. We're talking about a helmet of salvation. I need to be secure in him and know that God is coming through for me. 
So I'm going to wait on the Lord. I'm going to mount up with wings of eagles. Do you know how even when being mounted with wings of eagles, you know, say it should run and not be weary and walk and not faint. All right. Even though they stir an eagle's nest to get them out to fly. I mean, notice sometimes you have to be encouraged to go out because we can get in our comfort zone and then don't want to do anything. But you know what? God is challenging you because he sees your time. A lot of times people get things, and the biggest thing that will get you is a spirit of fear. You know, before it, it talks about in 2 Timothy 1, 7, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. That sixth verse talks about stirring up the gift of God that's within you. So you got to know that what God has started in you, he did not make an insignificant gift. You know, how many times we look at Moses, we look at other people, they always looked at themselves. But you have to know that you're a vessel of God. And when he gets you to get ready to say something, it's going to be him and not you. I can do what? All things through Christ that strengthened me. It's not of yourself. So when you can get to that and start saying, it's the God in me. They even had a song about that. Yeah. It's the God in me. So allow the God in you to do what's going to be done. Because we can always second guess ourselves before a message, before a presentation. But when you get here, if you already had that beard and lion, come on here, that same God that took you from before is going to take you through again. You just have to be able to trust in him. Amen. So there's a thing about being delayed and not denied. Mm, right. Moses had to be delayed, but what did he do? He got upset and he uh, was supposed to speak. He's a rock, he smote it. Mr. Promise Man. Abraham had to wait. Come on here. All right. 99 years. He too got impatient. Got an Ishmael. <laughs> right. David had to wait to be king and had to go through all kinds of pressures. Come on here. He had a spirit of Saul, a jealous person after him. Yeah. Coming after him because, but he still had to wait. Yeah. And guess what? Jesus had to wait. Yes. Yes. He even went to the things at age 12 and they said, why are you looking for me? Don't you know I need to be about my father's business? Yes. Yeah, you need to be about your father's business, but come on, boy. Come on here. We're going to go back here. Your time is not yet. Right. So sometimes we still have to wait. And there's something with doing that and understanding that when God is doing something, he's preparing something. We can get in our mind and we want things to happen like right away, but it's good to be able to know God's in charge. How many know God's in charge? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's not even surprised by anything that's happened last night, this morning. Come on here. God knew way to come on here. We get surprised because we people, we don't know all what's going on, but God's in charge. Yes. And when you think about that, what is Ecclesiastics? Three and one, when we look at that, I, I like to kind of sometimes go over three, one through eight. And I could do as detailed as before, but it says there's a time for everything. Yes. Three and one says for everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. Yes. yes. You know, when you don't have things in the right season, the leaves can break off if it's still some kind of things on there. I, I got a chance to see some uh, orange and, and brown leaves when I went to Indiana another weekend. You know, I, I had one of my clients, wherever we is, somebody wants some else. Somebody say, I want to see the four seasons. I, I had enough of the four seasons. I'm, yeah, I want to beat the world, you know. But like I said today, somebody got, they got snowed in in Colorado today. So uh, probably Minnesota probably is too. I don't know. There's some cold places. But there's a time and a season for everything under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. There's a time to weep and a time to laugh. You know, sometimes when people are going through with things and even going through their grief, Sometimes I think that we have to watch it that we don't just have to keep grieving because sometimes we expected that I still want to miss this person, but of course you're going to grieve. And there's no time limit on it. 
but don't feel like uh, I have to. Sometimes we got to feel we want to get a relief from whatever we're going through. Yes. So get to the Lord. There's a time to seek him and even get a break from even because sometimes it can get to be almost overwhelming. So a time to kill, time to break down, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dad, to dance, should I say. A time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones. I think when I did this some few months ago, I talked about even David getting his stones together. <laughs> All right. To deal with the life. That's it. So there's a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Yeah. So... You have to kind of watch the moment. Somebody said, read the room. Yes. <laughs> What's going on? You can't do for everything. You even have to teach your children differently at times. Because not everybody's the same way. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. There's a time to tear and a time to sow. A time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. You know, I think it's really good to get a download daily. God, what are you saying today? Okay. You know, because we can have our preconceived notions of what should happen or what. But, you know, the blessings of the Lord are new every day. I need to hear. I need a one time word. Let me get a download today because I don't want to be stuck in the past. I don't want to be stuck on what I should be doing. That there's somebody else think I should do. You don't want to just live by someone else's expectations of you. You got to get to the point, what did God say that I should? What's the right now word for, for here? I want to be able to be in flow in the spirit. Because the Bible says that he'll even make my enemies. When I please the Lord, he'll make my enemies to be. Yeah. You know, please. So I got to get to the point of God is all about you. Yes. If you please with me, then I'm good. Because people don't have no heaven or hell to put you in. And if you do that, you'll always be kind of stuck about what somebody else is going to think of you. Right. It's such a relief <laughs> to say, I want to do what God tells me to do. And because sometimes people are so double-minded. Of course, with my job, I deal with that on a daily basis. Some people really suffer from uh, lack of confidence and insecurities. There's a time for that. Some things are learned. Even sometimes worrying is learned. Anxious is learned. People kind of get pessimistic because that's what they heard their parents do. So you got to kind of understand that there's some things, but thank God that I can have a renewed mind. Yeah. And I don't have to keep doing what I've been through. Yeah. I tell people just because you had an experience, it doesn't have to be your identity yeah. for the rest of your life. So even with time, sometimes we have to make sure that we're motivated to do the right thing. So I'm looking at John, the fifth chapter, uh, the first to the twelfth verse. And you will all see that this is going to be a familiar passage as well. But it says, after this, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongues Bethesda, uh -huh. having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, a blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down, come on here, we talk about seasons. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And you know what? You don't want to take your season for granted. Sometimes people just think, oh, it's, it's going to come again. No, you, you have to take advantage of what God says to you right now. If he's telling you to do something right now. So he says that um, in the fifth verse, it says a certain man was there and he had a firmity. What? 30 and eight years. My, my. Come on here. You say, I would have been crawling, <laughs> rolling, trying to get to that pool. 
As he said, when Jesus saw him lie, he knew that he had been there a long time. In that case, he says unto him, will thou be made whole? And everybody who I'm talking to today, will thou be made whole? Are we going to stay in a point of pain and, and other things and just so, or will you be made whole? From the top of your head to the soles of your feet. You need to be whole. Come on, what? Spirit, soul, and body. Will thou be made whole? The impotent man said, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I'm a coming, another one steppeth down before me. And Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And what? Later on, mm -hmm. you know, my Bible said immediately, why y'all saying, mm -hmm, come now? <laughs> and immediately, Come on here, thank God for a right now action. Yes, yes, yes. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked on the same. And the day was a Sabbath. Come on, you're not supposed to be doing anything on the Sabbath. Come on. I bet you that man said, hey, you can do another day. Hey, <laughs> bring on my healing. You don't want to kind of put a day over something else and understand, especially when he says, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. That's right. That's it. So immediately man was made whole. He took up his bed and walked in the same day was the Sabbath. And the Jews therefore said unto him that he was cured. It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry that bed. Mm -hmm. Now we know they couldn't fulfill all those things that they were supposed yeah. to do on right. that day. Right, right. And you wear about it, man. A man been lame for 38 years and you're going to talk about him taking up his bed. Thank God he's able to pick up his bed and walk. Right, right. He answered them and he says, he made that hole and said unto him, take up thy bed and walk. Yeah. And they asked him, what man is this which said unto thee, take up thy bed and walk? I think another version said, what manner of man is this? That's right. Yeah. So we got to look at, we're talking about Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Right. Come the bright and morning star. Yeah. So this is the kind of thing that's happening. And when we think about Who's in charge? We can have every excuse in the book. You know, with another passage that we think about the woman with the issue of blood. And she said, they tried to keep her. And he said, if I could just touch the hem of his gun. Yes. Yes, yes. Come on here. I was blind, but now so many blind men. There's so many kind of things. When you get hungry about something, yes. you go after it. And it's like, it's, a, it's almost a difference. Sometimes I, I'm dealing with a lot of people nowadays, they don't have the same motivation as they had before. Mm -hmm. And sometimes teachers don't want to get, if somebody doesn't want to learn something, you don't want to make, you want somebody to want yeah. to come on here to learn something. Yes. And these people taking things from God, I guess they because they have Google and, and all these other things, YouTube, they take information for granted, but you still don't get wisdom from that. Mm -hmm. You need to hear from somebody who's been through something. And get that wisdom as well. Get the wisdom of God about something that's so important. So we don't want to just go on our motivation. I just think about even uh, coming here. Uh, you know, we, we went from a, a one bedroom and, you know, we used to call it the breakers in, in uh, Colorado. And when we first came here in Stafford, we had a one bedroom. So still in the process, God, why am I here? What's coming on here? Oh, Lord. It's, it's come, getting fulfilled this weekend. Come on here. I don't know why I'm coming here. I can't. I'm supposed to start another church. It just, just wouldn't work out. Oh, it was, what's going on? Go to Galveston. Went to Galveston and went back up to Stafford because you didn't like that. End up here back in the Galveston County area. Then this church called the Carpenter's House. But anyway, before that... <laughs> We had a, a one bedroom in Stafford, then we rented a place in Missouri City. And then they came and we were, uh, we couldn't find a house in 2021 because it was a seller's market and we bid 10,000 more than what somebody else bid and still couldn't get a house. So we got with our realtor and we said, we need somebody, you know, somebody who's going to, you know, build the houses. We need to get to that point. And they gave us a choice of either Baytown or Lamarck. 
said, well, what's a Lamar? Never heard of a Lamar. <laughs> so I went to Lamar and, and the lady could, no, I had never heard of him. I've been to Galveston several times. You know, we went, came, and we looked at a place, and did some good things all over. And then there was somebody hoping that we wouldn't uh, qualify. He was waiting for us to bomb out, but we, we got it that day. But I'm just saying. <laughs> but God will do things. Now, because you have one expectation of something, and you don't know what he's working on. So still, even today, you still, we walk by faith and not by sight. So, but when you obey God, he's going to do something. So this is a faith walk. What did he tell Abraham? Leave your country and kindred to a place that thou knowest not. Thou knowest not. And I've been doing that for a while, and there's still a faith walk. Come on here. <laughs> Everybody said you shouldn't be doing this and that. I had that since I was 18 when I joined the Air Force. Boy, you're going to leave all this? I said, there's something greater inside me. Well, who do you think? You're probably like Joseph. This boy got a dream. Yeah, I had a dream. I wasn't going to be there 65 years old, the same steel mill in Gary, Indiana. I feel like there was something greater on the inside. Amen. I took a chance on the God in me. Come on here. And so it turned out, you know, I'm not going to go through all my testimony, all the different things, but but I'm here today. Good, that's good. Amen. And I thank God that there's been some trials of different things in different places, ministers, apostles, pastors, teachers, <laughs> but we're here today. So the thing is, is that just saying that, you know, God is the potter. We're the clay. He's molding us. He's making us. And if you can stay pliable, he's still, you know, because he says, Paul says, I couldn't wait to get to that. I might impart something spiritual to you. But we still be informed that when you form the maze, sometimes it takes pressure. What did he tell you? The trial of your faith being much more precious than gold that perish. So sometimes your faith is going to be on trial. Do I trust God or am I just trusting myself? I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. Let me get back to my lesson. That's why. That's good. Okay, so you know the David, the story of David in the first, and I'm not, I don't, I'm not gonna probably read that. First Samuel 30, one through eight, where David was gonna go uh, with the Philistines, and to the point where, because they had got to Ziglag, and he was trying to look at that they was gonna go against Saul, so he was pretending he was gonna go against Saul's people, but. Right. Well, the other people, they didn't, they didn't trust him. They told him to come back. But while he was gone with his men, they destroyed, took all the women. They burned the place up down, the kids and the families. And they were very angry. His men got angry with him. was about ready to stone him. You know, and, you know, he got treated. They were just, just, just torn. And he got to the place to inquire of the Lord. And say, shall I pursue? Yeah. Shall I overtake them? What do you tell them? Yes. Pursue. What yeah. do you mean? That David inquired of the Lord, saying, shall I pursue this band? Shall I overtake them? And he said, pursue, for you will surely overtake them all. Yeah. And you will really rescue all. So as we wait on God, sometimes it might not be in our time. But he has a plan. God is in control. If you can believe it, God is in control. Yes. So, and the whole thing is sometimes God gives us conditions and then we have to get to the point, are you willing to even look at the conditions that God might give you to deal with? So in Isaiah 1, 19 and 20, it says, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat of the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. So if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat of the good of the land. What is that? And I, and I know it's too many in Deuteronomy 28, too many things with blessings and curses. But if you look at them, there was a whole bunch of conditions. If thou art willing, come on here. Then if you do all this, 
You'll be blessed. If you do this, do that. But if you don't do this and that, then you're going to be what? A curse. Right. Sometimes when people see the, hear a prophecy, they hear all the good words, but they don't listen to the condition. So it's what God wants to do. Once he wants to establish, it should be a, a kind of agreement in your spirit, but you got to understand there are some conditions that come with things. And it's all in his time. How many know that God is not in time? We're in time. But when he says something, he considered it's done. But we get all frantic, anxious, and everything else because we want it now. Yes. <laughs> but when he already called us healed, he already saw it being healed. Yes, we got to go through a process. But you have to know that, you know, we may have something going. We can may do it for a night, but what? Joy cometh in the morning. There is a time for everything. There is that weeping and everything else, but joy cometh in the morning. Don't get stuck in your valley. You got to have a valley ministry as well. All right. Amen. Amen. What does John 8 31 say? If, so that must mean not everybody does it. If you continue in my word, Then you shall be my disciples indeed. And you shall what? Know the truth. Yeah. And the truth shall make you free. Right. If you continue in my word. So that must mean that not everybody is going to continue in his word. The word discipline comes from the word disciple. Which is to teach. So am I still teachable? Or I got to the point that I know everything. Can I still hear from a, a fifth grader? Can I hear from a five-year-old? You know, sometimes I get some revelations from different things, and, 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 and it's good to hear. You don't have to feel like I'm arrived. You need to keep a teachable spirit. All right. So if you continue my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Yes. There's bondage in just keep going forward with fallacies, but you know what? You know, God gave us uh, what we call a conscience, but then the other thing is I tell people, just walk in your peace. If you don't understand about flowing in the spirit of God, if you don't have a peace about something, God is trying to tell you not to do something. God says, yes, no, and wait. So why not get impatient? We ignore it, but people have the yellow lights and they have the red lights because they just did something because they felt that I needed to do this right now. Sometimes we have opportunities and they make you feel like the sale is so great that if you miss it tonight, that's their job to get the sale. They, they get you all into it and then they put a time thing on it that if you don't make a decision right now, you're going to miss out on the best deal of your life. Come on here. That's right. But that's what they're supposed to do. So now you all urgent. You're trying to make things like I get this. Come on here. And, and you get in a situation and what do they call that? Uh, Remorse, you get buyer's remorse right. sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> There's some people I know that have survivor's remorse. <laughs> no, I, it was a person who everybody else in his, his unit got blown up, but you know, it's like, I should have watched, but I didn't. Why am I here? That means that God did something great for you. Come on here. Yes. Sometimes we can feel guilt conscious when we don't need to be. So God is concerned about us forgiving one another as well. That's why we have the word in Mark 11, 25 and 26. What is he saying? When you stand praying, forgive. Yeah. Right. If you have any ought against any, that your father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, Neither will your father which is in heaven forgive your trespass. I just talked to somebody today and talked to their mom in five, ten years and they ain't did different things. People hold on to some grudges my, 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 my. and they still remember what if they changed? What is this good doing you when you miss them? That's why you're talking to me about them because you must be having a problem about it. So sometimes we get pride 
And we get our pride so prideful that I don't know, I, I can't say I'm sorry because of what that person did. Is, did God forgive you? Right. Now, I'm not saying you have to put yourself in a bad situation or, or something, that, especially to be abused again or hurt or something. I'm not saying that. But don't hold on to something when you can lose it. Be free. Be free in him. Even if they don't receive it, as long as you've said it, then you can be free. You need to get to an age, a certain time, that when you see people having funerals and they don't get to say their last goodbye, and then they always say, I wish I would have come on here. It's so hurtful because they allow pride to get in their way. And you hear they are in the funeral, and I, I wish I wanted my daddy to know I love him. I wanted my, but you wouldn't say it when they was Hello. here. Hello. And then you hold yourself in a guilt conscious like I should have did this and that. But if you're able to do it, do it. Do it do you all who still got your parents or whatever the case may be, they might get on your nerve. But that's a, come on here. That's a blessing for the Lord. Yeah. Do what you can do until God doesn't have you no more. Because when they're not there anymore, you're going to certainly miss them. Amen. So, forgive. And then we have 2 Corinthians 8 and 12. For if first there be a willing mind, it is acceptable according that a man have, and not according that he have not. That can be from giving, that can give from different things. I always tell people, that's my phrase, do what you can do and don't worry about what you can. Why do we get caught up on what we can't do? God, even the world got the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can and the wisdom. They even understand that. Why can't we understand that? We kingdom folks. Amen. God didn't tell you to be superman or superwoman and, and be, that's what Jesus came for is to be this great sacrifice. He didn't tell you to be the great sacrifice for everybody. That's right. So do what you can do. It's not wise for you to put yourself in debt and, and get somebody else and co-sign for something and you stressing every day and they're going on about it. Come on here. No. You say, oh, ouch. But anyway, hopefully we don't last. Somebody said that I told them I was going to steal their saying, sometimes we win, sometimes we learn, but we never lose. If you can understand that if I could learn something from something that I thought was a failure, then I didn't, it's not a failure. I didn't lose. Now, wise things let me learn from that. And when the situation come on the next time, don't do it again. We can't beat up somebody about the past and we need to quit beating ourselves up about the past. Amen. Yes. Amen. And sometimes the enemy will try to get you to doubt God's word. We know that happened in what? The beginning. In Genesis. When he said, have God said, you, not, you shall not surely die. Isn't that what the serpent told Eve? Because God knows when your eyes are open up, you'll know good from evil. You know, and just, just not, now God knew that's why he had to slam, lamb slain before the foundation of the earth. But he was still hoping right now, he still gives you an opportunity to choose. And sometimes we get consequences for our choices, but guess what? We have the opportunity to choose. Mm -hmm. So the enemy did that and he tried the same thing with Jesus. Soon as he got baptized. What did he do? Took him to the wilderness. After he had fasted all of what? 40 days and 40 nights. If thou be the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word to proceed it out of the mouth Amen. of God. Amen. Come on here. He got to him by the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the temple light, the uh, uh, Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Yes. 
Bow down, bow down and worship me. I'll give you all these kingdoms. Thou should only worship the Lord thy God. And him only shall that serve. Amen. All this was in Matthew 4. And then the other thing is he told them that if thou cast thyself down, the angels are coming there will pick you up. And then what did he tell them? Don't tempt the Lord thy God. You don't need to go and try to take some poison or something else to prove that you say that's not a good wisdom. <laughs> right. So, but it's good to have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. Yes. And then every day, you know, every one of us can touch somebody that somebody else doesn't have access to. This is not the only way for ministry. The kingdom of God is meant that you can have kingdom on your job, kingdom in the Airways, kingdom in the in the entertainment, kingdom in the family, kingdom in the schools, wherever you are, you should be able to have kingdom. And he's given you what? The ministry of reconciliation. So you should know that wherever I go, kingdom is. You know, and your opportunity because you can say what thus says the Lord. Somebody is hurting and then you might just kind of just go past them. You got to see God, do you want me to stop and say something? Do I need to do that or do I need to pray? And it might be because of the situation you're in. Not everything is the same thing. But what did he tell us as a people? If my people yeah. which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and do what? And turn. Repentance is going in a different direction. Turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. Then will I forgive their sin and then will I heal their land. If my people which are called by my name Humble yourselves and pray. Dr. Terry did some series on prayer. Come on here. Man. And you still have to know prayer is never out of style. Worship is not out of style. Amen. The Bible says that everything that have pray, uh, breath, praise ye the Lord. Amen. So we got to understand you're not getting too much modern just because it's 2024 that the same thing that it took before that now is not going to take that anymore. He still has an ear. We have not because we ask not. And then we know sometimes we ask a mess. You don't want to just get stuff to consume it upon your own lust. Why am I saying what I'm saying? Why am I doing what I'm doing? You need to check your motivation before you say and do something on a daily basis. Is my heart right? Am I trying to be seen? Am I trying to make a point? Am I trying to put some in? Am I trying to look like, I, do I need to try to get attention? Yeah. So many times people get this victim mindset. They only just see everything is against them. Come on here. Change your perception. Change your mindset. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Come on here. So I need to get to the point of understanding that this is the confidence of him that he which began a good work in me shall what? Perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians 1 and 6. So I got to know what he started in me. He's still working it out. And, and sometimes things take a process. Come on here. When, when you do that thing, I, and, and I don't know all about grits, but I know that somebody said when you do it like in a couple of minutes, that's not this, that's not their... <laughs> It's supposed to take some time, come on here, to get it where, where it really should be. Yeah. And this you have to know too, that pastor was talking about the gnoscos, epigonoscos, that's the full, come on here. All right, all right. So you gotta understand there's different way of being known and I wanna be 30, 60, 100 fold, I wanna be the 100 fold. Amen. You know, when I was a child, I thought I was a child, I spake as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. So when I start walking in sonship, when I walk in maturity, there should be a difference than when I just started. 
When he began, he said that I couldn't tell you different things because you weren't mature yet. And so with our own foul ground, how many know that we can get the hardness of our heart? Okay. So you got Hosea 10 and 12. It says, sow to the Lord in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord until he comes and rains righteousness upon you. Break up your fallow ground. Why are you still hard? Why are you still doing different things? Well, that's just the way we Joneses are. Well, come on here. I thought you was a friend. is in Christ. He's a new creation. And old things have passed away, and behold, all things become new. I don't still want to be the same way as the Smiths and Jones that I used to be. I want to be different. Amen. And so the enemy is going to bring up some things, sometimes financial, sometimes health, sometimes different things against your mind, fear, different things. But I thank God for the word in Isaiah 54. It says what? No weapon. Come on here. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And everything that rise up against me in judgment, thou shalt condemn. So any kind of weapon, Financial weapon, emotional weapon, health weapon. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But guess what? It doesn't always have to be by somebody else's word. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me, boy. But it shall accomplish the thing to the where I please it. So prosper the thing to where I sent it. Come on here, word. I'm going to speak a word. I'm going to declare a word. I'm going to say it, say it, till I say it, see it. i got to keep speaking things. And if you keep saying something, then you're going to have a revelation in your heart. Because that same fear might be in you. You might have had the doctor's report. You might have had somebody else's report. But whose report are you going to believe? I believe the report of the Lord. His report says I'm healed. His report says I have the victory. I'd rather go by that report than the Report that keeps coming in my mindset and tries to cause unrest. Yes. Philippians 4 and 6 told us to be anxious about, don't be anxious about anything. Yes, yes. Yeah. But with supplication, with thanksgiving, yes. let every request be made known unto God. We still talk about God's in charge. Amen. Don't be anxious about anything. But with everything, with prayer and supplication, and what? Thanksgiving. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Come on here. And everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Not some things. Well, God, why am I going to thank God in this? Because there's something that I'm still alive. There's something I still need to thank God. His thinking is not the same as mine. Yes. What did he tell Joe? Where were you? Okay. We're not created to work. We can get so smart in ourselves. That's what happened with the Tower of Babel. Knocked it down. All right. That's right. So God still has ways. It's not our ways. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. The NLT says don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. I like that. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. The ABS says, in the peace of God, we pass it all understanding, shall guard your hearts and thoughts in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so good to remember. So good to know. Amen. And then we, of course, when you're going through that Philippians 4 route, you got to get to the 8th verse. Yes. Amen. For whatsoever thing is honest. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Whatsoever thing is just. Yes. Right. Whatsoever thing is pure. Yep. Whatsoever thing is of a good report. Yes, yes. If whatsoever thing is lovely, if there be, um, what do you say? If there be anything, a good thing, 
basically think on these things. Have a good report or pray, stick on these things. That's what it is. Amen. Tell you what to think on. Amen. And because we know Proverbs 10 and 23 says, A man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The Bible says train up a child in the way he should go. We got to train up our own thinking in the way we should go too. And get redirection if it's not going that way. So we get challenges to our belief and thoughts all the time. And we have to watch those. One of the biggest things that I brought up earlier is fear. What we say? Say, don't for God has not given us the spirit of fear with the power of love. Yeah. He told us don't be anxious for anything. What is Matthew 6 talking about? Consider the lilies of the field. 16, what? Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these other things will be added unto you. Uh -huh. yeah. I got to get a priority of what I'm seeking and what I'm looking for. So another challenge of our belief system is depression. So sometimes we regret the past. Don't stay in the past. All right. Forgetting those things which are behind and pressing towards those of which things are before. I press towards the what? For the mark. For the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You can't fix the past. <laughs> Why argue about the past? Just say my bad and from today forward I'm going to be a better man, a better woman. Let's not get... And then sometimes, and I get from people, well, there's a pattern. Well, your man or woman is not a robot. Yeah. They're going to try to do the best. Just try to do the best you can and, and give each other grace and mercy just like you would a stranger. Right. We give some strangers so much grace and mercy that we do our people we live with. Right. And, and do my word that I made up. We didn't. I still got it. I might, I might need to get a patent on that for somebody else trying to take it. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the other things, but well, we get unfulfilled when we different things. We feel like we left out at work. We feel like we left out at home. We feel like we hurt from a relationship. We don't feel like we fit in in places. And we get, you know, we feel hopeless and helpless. But God has purpose in that too. Whatever that you're in, if you can change your perception about the situation and say, maybe God wants me to look at it this way. I don't care if everything you in, there's a different way. Instead of looking at it half empty, you can look at it half full. So God, what do you want to get out of me? He don't want you to walk in a pessimistic mindset because he calls you to be delivered. I know the thoughts I think toward you are good and not evil to give you a hope in the future. He don't want you to fail. He don't want you to be hopeless. He don't want you to. So there's always something that he wants you to get out of things. And then the Bible told us, don't be angry. Come on here. That's what happened with Moses. Come on. He was a, you let anger get to him too many times. Sometimes we have wounds of the past and, and understand they can be hurt. They can be traumatic and different things. But don't let that, that wound keep you from allowing yourself to be healed. I'm not trying to say it's not real. Whether it's childhood, whether it's relatives, some people got church hurt. Yeah. And that can be some of the deepest things. Come on here. Some folks are not in church today because of something that happened when they was a teenager or when they was a young adult. Or they went, somebody said something to them one time and they put everybody in one box. But when you're dealing with human beings, you got to understand the only. You know, the church might have been perfect until you got there. Because <laughs> you deal, you're an imperfect person. So you got to always understand that God works through people. And he wants to work in us. And he wants us to encourage women. Edification, exhortation, is comfort is just, just a minor prophecy. And so we got to just know what all these different things he's putting some in us. And you got to know the promises that he had for you. There's still promises today. So I look at 2 Corinthians 1.20. It says, for all the promises of God in him are 
in him we are yea and amen unto the glory of God by us. And what does Romans 8, 28 say? All things. Did he say some things? <laughs> All things work together for the good. To them that love the Lord, to them that are called according to his purpose. I believe that's what it says, right? That's it. But what about this? That he said, all things. But this is not the way I want it. All things. There it is. Well, how can I get God glory out of this? All things. Work together for the good. To them that love God. To them that are called according to his purpose. Nothing catches God by surprise. He's got provision for any and everything. And the same God, how many times? Did, look at what Israel was time and time again. He kept coming through from them again. And they still went back to not trusting him again. All right. Serving other gods, serving other things. All right. But I'm going to end with that. We're serving them. We're going to let all things work together for his good. Amen. To them who love the Amen. Lord, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And you have to know if you're watching here today, if you haven't accepted the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that's the biggest thing. God is willing. He says he's not willing that any should perish, but that all shall come to repentance. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for what you're doing in and through. Yes. So if you watch and say, Lord, forgive me yes. of my sins. Yes. Against you and you only have I sinned. Come into my life. I make you today my Lord and my Savior. I believe that you died, you buried, and you were rose again for my salvation. Take full control of your of my life. And I thank God for receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's going to lead and guide me into all truth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Anybody have any questions or comments? I forgot to. Yeah.